Welcome along to another video on the E39 V10 project. First of all, yes I need a haircut, so does the rest of the country and I'm not going to shave it off just yet. Um, in today's video I'm going to look at working on the engine bay, take a break from the interior for a bit. Um, I'm going to look at making some top radiator mounts because the current, uh, current ones probably aren't up to standard so I'm starting off with some rubber bobbin mounts going to sort of sit them two in there and then make a bracket off there and there up to there and then incorporate a mounting for the coolant reservoir there and then do the same here end up making another hole put another slide clip in there and make the same bracket for this side so I'm going to start on making a template for that and I'll show you in a second okay so there's a um, just a cardboard template made for there just roughly showing the where the bolt holes are going to be there isn't one on this side of the slam panel, but there is there, so I'll have to replicate something in here as well. But the only issue is the slam panel's in a lot more than it is there, so I'm just going to have to move the hole into that gap there more, so it's actually caught in the slam panel. And if I just unscrew this. So there it is in cardboard, and there it is in a piece of steel. I need to finish all the edges off and, and make it a lot prettier but for now I just want to get the stuff mounted up. So that's roughly where it sits. I've fad the bonnet down and that clears. Um, so yeah I need to look at fixing the feet in there next so the radiator needs to come forward still. Um, and yeah that's that's like that like there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is get some measurements and get the rubber mount holes drilled so I can bolt them in place. Okay, so what I've done now is I've drilled some 6mm holes and bolted into the anti-vibration mounts and I haven't fit, drilled this hole yet so the G-clamp's just holding it but as you can see there's a bit of movement in the radiator which is what you want and it's pulling all the hoses away from the engine which is what I was after. Um, so now I'm going to sort out a proper solution for these, I've had to use washers and all sorts to get the height right because the threads inside the mounts aren't very deep. Um, so I'm going to do that next and then look at trimming this back because it doesn't need to go as far now I know where I want to go there. Um, so I'm going to do that, look at cleaning all the edges off and um, then start on this side which is going to be very similar which is basically flip the template over and that will give me it for this side with an addition of an extra bracket to just support the weight of the coolant reservoir as well. So I'm going to do that now. That's this side bracket all finished off bar paint. Um, what I ended up doing was cutting the heads off some bolts and actually welding them on there. So now you can see how that's one with one of the rubber vibration mounts on there and all you've got is a thread and that side and some high build primer should come out quite nice. Um, so yeah, that, that side's done. And then like I said, this side, just literally flip the pattern over. Um, and yeah, it's because the radiator's virtually central within a mill or so. Um, it will mean that this bracket will be exactly the same. Maybe shifted over a millimetre or so. I could feel off um, the alignment. I'll just compare them. So where this bit sits, it's central with the part underneath. So I'm going to start making that now, but I need to actually extend the template to come round here um, to support that as well. So what I'm going to do is get some more card and just take the two pieces of card together to give me the pattern that I need. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. Here's a card template I made for this side. Uh, it's the same one that I use that side, but I'll just mask and take the bit extra I want for the coolant reservoir. And here's the bracket for this side. Um, what I ended up doing was welding some some um, studs. So I just cut some bolts down, welded them from this side, and then linished it off just to skim a body filler before I paint that, and I'll, that'll all look good. Um, it just cleans the job job up a bit. Uh, I've done the same on this side. 
it just means there's no bolt heads and when it's painted it'll all be a nice smooth finish so that's like tucks under there bolts onto them two there and then you've also got a captive nut welded on the back of there so that's all ready to be scuffed up and painted now so I'm going to get on with that and then we'll look at something else in the engine bay that's the upper radiator mounts painted up now they've come out really nice and really pleased with them uh, so yeah they're done that's the coolant reservoir mounted and, and bolt isn't tight yet but yeah he's all mounted up now um, another thing I've had to go at painting which have come out absolutely horrendously uh, I bought some of the crackle finish paint it's come out like Tony the Tiger with his stripes some places are crackled some places haven't uh, this is only a temporary measure till a lot of places open back up and I can just get them powder coated crackle black instead but it will look a lot better than the uh, silver plain tubes for now so what I'm going to get them installed back in get the airflow meters bol bolted back into them and we'll go from there that's the intake tubes back on as you can see again Tony the Tiger effect um, I've just chucked the pollen filter box on uh, and you can really see it's starting to come together now uh, it looks quite good which I'm pleased with uh, I've got the bumper off just need to sort the air filters out and on the Jubilee clips are tight so I need to get the bumper on and try and angle everything right before I tighten everything up um, so the next job on the agenda is going to be to sort out whatever someone's done here before with uh, the headlights when someone's fitted hay, uh, facelift headlights before they've just butchered all the plugs so I need to look at that next I've got a donor harness so I'm not too bothered about it and I need to look at getting all this taped all back up and getting all the loom finished off so I can get the headlights back in the bumper on uh, all the arch liners need to go in as well because they're not in at the moment uh, I have gone for a stug conversion never had them before I'll see how I get on uh, but yeah it's all the all the front needs to go back together now really um, I have just had it up and running now I've just put all the air intakes back on I've just been looking at a couple of bits on the um, speedo still but I'll go into that in another video looking at more interior bits uh, so next on the list is going to be to look at that wiring so I'm going to crack on with that now I've repaired all the headlight wiring now for some reason someone to mess with the indicators the side lights and the fog lights I'd suggest that this car was originally um, as it was a pre facelift car it had the non angel eye headlights so someone's changed all these plugs for the angel eyes just a bit of a tip for whenever you're joining wires um, try and stagger your joints this means that the overall um, finished finish repair is thinner when you tape it up instead of them being uh, together like that with them being staggered when you tape it up it's a lot thinner um, and then the next thing is used glue lined heat shrink uh, so many people just put normal heat shrink on there and they think it's going to be fine because it's sealing it up but no just use this is just adhesive line, this is just a little cheap kit off Amazon, it's got all different sizes in there. That's what I just use just for doing repairs and bits like this. And with it being sealed it's not going to let any moisture in, um, which is a big thing outside the car, but it can also be inside the car with regards to something like if you were splicing into the iBus or repairing the iBus wire. If you didn't seal that off from the elements and moisture did get in it could corrode and with the iBus especially on the E39 it can cause a lot of problems if it doesn't shut down battery drain issues and, and, and the likes of that sort of stuff so just a little tip um, I've sold us jointed these as well uh, not just touch the two wires together I've actually intertwined them so sort of wrapped them together wrapped one that way and then the other one that way on top of each other and that just gives it a bit of mechanical strength for when you solder it as well um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tape all the harness back together all the way back up to the electrical box there where the ECU is fitted um, try and get all this tidied up and back together feed it all back through uh, the horns need to go on wherever I've lost them and they're somewhere in a box of crap somewhere so I'm going to do that now and then that should be most of the front stuff ready and the headlights ready to go back in that's the front end all 
all up together now. Uh, the bumper's on loosely. I just need to tighten the two bolts up underneath, but I've got all the headlights in, tidied all the wiring up. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's really starting to look complete now. Uh, there's still the arch liners to put back in, but yeah, that's just a job. Um, the air filters obviously sit behind the bumper there, just about. Um, and with the fog lights, with the open fog light there, that I'm hoping that will be enough air. Um, I need to sort out uh, brake cooling ducts, and I might duct them into um, more air feed ducts as well. Um, I'm sure you've seen the grills where they put like the the base sub base ports on there. I'll probably run some of them for brake cooling. Um, I do need to get a M5 grill for this bumper. Uh, this bumper is actually carbon black. I got it off. Uh, Someone who was breaking their car, unfortunately, Sam. So big shout out to Sam for letting me um, buy the bumpers off him. I've got one for the back as well. Uh, so it just makes it all look a lot more presentable for, for driving on the road. Instead of the vinyl wrapped one I had on there before. Or grey. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end this video here. And hopefully in the next video I've got to finish fitting the stud conversion kit have a general look around underneath, make sure everything's tight and hopefully going to be going for a little drive maybe just a little road test just to make sure everything's alright and make sure all the ABS fixes are working now I've changed the front hubs as you saw in the earlier videos to try and fix the ABS locking up well, traction control kicking in straight away and cutting all the power away um, but yeah, I'll leave it there, I'll see you on the next video